This video is going to be a brain dump of all the various tools I've learned within the past few months regarding body tension and how to minimize cutting feet when climbing on the moonboard or sleep walls in general. I did talk about it very briefly in my V5 to V8 video, but I felt like I brushed over the topic too much and I wanted to make a more comprehensive and dedicated video towards this. When I was starting to work on body tension, people would give me advice like climb more or think of your feet more. Which is true, but there is so much more to it and I felt like people were always too busy to explain the complexities of body tension to me. So with this guide, I hope viewers will find it helpful, and if it is, please like this video and share it with your climbing friends. One important thing to note, in the previous video, I mentioned that my maximum span of rows that I can reach without cutting, given my height, was 10 rows on the moonboard. But after improving the technique and concepts that I'm about to cover, I was actually able to recently stretch that limit to 11 rows. This caught me by surprise and I'm super psyched to share these ideas, so let's begin. For the longest time, I had noticed this one thing while climbing on the moonboard or climbing on overhung terrain in general. The more you pull outwards from the wall with your hands, the more you can push or apply pressure with your feet into the wall or a foothold. By varying how hard you pull outwards at various angles, you can change the desired force to apply to the foothold that you want to not cut from. This is a major concept of body tension. We mostly cut because we cannot apply enough force into the foothold and subsequently we slip. Therefore, in times where you find yourself cutting a lot, finding various methods to pull outwards from the wall to increase the force applied to the footholds can oftentimes fix this. This concept is called counter pressure in this video by Movement for Climbers. So I'll use this vocab for the rest of the video to stay consistent. Take for example this climb called Termination. I took many attempts to reach the jug on H10 without cutting. I cut, and I cut, and I cut. I was cutting a lot, but finally I found that the way to prevent the cut was to pull outwards from the wall with the hold my right hand was holding throughout the dynamic move. By pulling outwards on my right hand, it created a counter pressure that allowed me to keep more pressure on the left foot, which prevented me from cutting. And this was also a similar concept near the top of the problem where I often cut in the past as well. Once I caught the triangular hold at I-16, I tried to pull outwards with my left hand to achieve counter pressure once again on my foot. And thus, I was able to send termination without cutting. Amazing. You don't have to constantly think about counter pressure, just on moves where your feet feel unstable and you feel like you're about to cut. An example of this is on C-3PO, where most of the beginning moves were pretty stable for me, but I would always cut on this move near the top, and that's when I applied counter pressure, same concept. Once I caught the black hold, I tried to immediately pull outwards as soon as I made contact with it, and the counter pressure pushes your foot towards the wall, there's more pressure on the foothold, and you stay on. This brings us to the next concept, which is to minimize pulling downwards on very difficult and outstretched moves. There are some problems where the move is very far, the hold you need to grab is way above you, you feel like your eyes are about to pop out of their sockets with the amount of effort you need to give to get to the hold, and the mistake is, since you expended so much effort to reach the hold, you immediately pull downwards as soon as you touch it. It's really just instinct, pretty much, to pull down. And that was my mistake with my earlier attempts of C-3PO. I would pull downwards, this causes your body to lift up, and you would cut. But as soon as I started to pull outwards and I created the counter pressure, everything was smooth. But then, there's a caveat. There are certain non-ergonomic holds where if it's way above you, it's super hard to pull outwards to generate that counter pressure. And at that point, it's just important to minimize your pull down. For example, on this problem called apple picking, there's an outstretched move that goes to a pinch and it's not as great as the hold on the ending of C-3PO, the black hold. This move was pretty far, so I always had the urge to pull downwards on it when I grabbed it. And you can actually see it in some of the clips where like my arm just like starts to do a one arm pull up. And that was bad because I would lift my body from pulling downwards and I would cut. So because it's a pinch that's so high above you, it's hard to generate counter pressure once you grab it. But then you ask, what about the left hand boss? Why can't you generate counter pressure with that? Well, it's hard to generate counter pressure on that left hand as well because it's more of like a shallow side pull. So in this scenario where I couldn't really do counter pressure on either of my hands, I really had to just concentrate on just grabbing the pinch and not pulling down too much 
if at all. And it worked. Overall, if you're able to combine the concept of counterpressure and the concept of minimal pull, it can get you pretty far. In this example, I combine the two. For this move, I use counterpressure, and I want to highlight here that counterpressure does not necessarily always mean pulling outwards from the wall and pushing your feet into the wall. As long as you can find a way to oppose the forces, it usually works pretty well, and in this example, the forces are more left and right rather than into and out of the wall. And for the last hold, once I grab it, I grab it with just enough force and without overly pulling downwards, that way I can keep more weight on my feet and my feet just stick a lot better. When you're finally able to combine counter pressure and the minimal pull, it really helps. Once I was able to figure that out, I was better able to match some of the betas that I saw on YouTube. For example, Girl Beta or Andy Liu's Beta, and that felt pretty good. And then I started to work on the techniques even more, and right when I was able to do this problem called Hack without cutting, I was like over the moon because the betas online with Andy Liu and Girl Beta, they cut feet on it, so I never thought that I would be able to hold the body tension for it, but once I was able to do that, I was like, holy crap, this technique is working. So yeah, counter pressure and really minimizing the pull, just working and making that an art, like just really, really just grab it just enough to stay on, that's the secret. Next, let's explore some details regarding footwork or what to do with your feet in general to gather better body tension. The most common advice I've heard is to really think about your feet. Push just enough to get to the next hold with your feet, but don't jump. And that's honestly what we all need to practice. It won't come in just one session, especially if you haven't climbed with these ideas in mind before, because I think for beginner and intermediate climbers, there's such a disconnect between our upper body and our lower body. And that disconnect just gets amplified when you're put on a steep wall. So really, you just have to practice your footwork every single session. And after a while, you'll be able to differentiate which moves you can really care less about good footwork and which moves you have to be really delicate on. Alright, so if you thought that footwork advice was pretty boring, I feel you because I thought that way too. So that's why I want to share something that I found way more helpful. One very high yield point is to implement exercises that target your posterior chain in the warm-up. When I talk about posterior chain, I'm mainly talking about your core, your lower back muscles, your glutes, hamstrings, calves. In my previous video, I mentioned a posterior chain exercise recommended by Hooper's Beta. While I do use that to strengthen my posterior chain, I found it to be very important to do a slight variation of it before my moonboard sessions. You can look at it this way, we train our fingers so much, but for each session, we still need to always warm up our fingers to not only prevent injuries, but to also wake them up and make them strong. This is the same with the posterior chain and other lower extremity muscle groups. Most climbers prioritize warming up their upper body way more than their lower body. That's why I think it's very interesting to watch pro climbers warm up sometimes, especially the warm up scenes from the Ross and Tim vlogs. After trying to copy them, I just feel like a full body warm up leads to a much better climbing session. In terms of better footwork for body tension, adding a leg warm up has been key for me to reliably wake up and activate my posterior chain because it allows me to achieve stronger control of my footwork and thus more body tension. It makes a huge difference on your ability to just arch your back backwards, to engage your lower back and your glutes, your hamstrings, your calf to hold your body tension, and really to just claw down on the footholds. So for every session I do this warm up, it always starts out like very spasmy because I'm just waking the muscles up. Um, I try to do like three to five reps in this position where my knees are bent at 90 degrees, and then I put my legs outwards a little bit more with like a bigger angle, and I do like around five reps, and then I put my legs even out further and I do about five reps on both sides and that really just like wakes everything up and it's very similar to the Hooper's beta exercise that I talked about in my previous video. I'll show you why this warm-up is very helpful. For example, on this problem called Little Black Submarine, I was never really able to not cut on this last move until I started adding the posterior chain warm-up. It just helped me engage my lower body and just claw the hell out of this foothold with downwards foot flexion to stay in contact. Like, Everything was flexed, like my calves were flexed, my hamstrings were flexed, my like, you can't really see it, but my glutes and my lower back, they were probably like hella flexed, and that just really helped me stay on. So that's really, really key. To have better foot control, you need to just activate your foot muscles because, um, yeah, you're like a general regular warm up of just climbing on low grades, like that will not warm up your legs that much. 
Engaging your posterior chain can feel quite unnatural sometimes because in the beginning you might be quite weak and that's how I was. A lot of the times when I needed to really engage it, I would just cut. But after deliberately practicing it quite a bit, I revisited some problems that I used to cut before and I was able to just stick the move and I thought it was kind of cool because on this problem I was also able to skip one of the holds. And yeah, just keep in mind that even though you practice a lot of posterior chain in your strength training, whether that is TRX or even deadlifts, you still need to warm up and awaken those muscles every session just so you can engage it to the fullest. The next concept to discuss is actually quite interesting and it's leaning in the direction of pull. Out of all the V4 benchmarks that I've done, I would say that the problem 808 was the most perplexing and it took me the longest time to figure out how to not cut. No matter how much I adjusted my feet or tried to pull up as close to the next hold as possible, I was never able to stay on. There's something to notice here though. Look at the angle of the hold. It requires a side pull. And the foot was relatively pretty far to the left. I know it doesn't look far in the video, but I'd consider it kind of far. The reason why I couldn't keep my body tension on this move was because I was climbing too square. My torso was too square to the wall. Going back to the concept of counter pressure, remember that? The left foot was too far out left on an already pretty slopey foothold. It's hard to establish counter pressure like this because your foot is way off center. Because I was just climbing square, it would have been pretty hard for me to keep the body tension. So the thing that I did differently for the Sengo was that I was not square for this move. Instead, I tried my best to turn my torso to the left, so I kind of lay back while catching the small black hold. So in cases where you repeatedly fall and can't figure out why, consider if your foothold is way out to one side that it requires you to lean in the direction of pull. It's more clear if I give more examples, like for this problem, it uses the same black hold, but I was able to climb a square. Why? It's because the foot is not forced to be so far away from the center of where your body is. It's literally underneath the hold that you need to catch. So overall, it's easy to climb square on these problems because the feet are right under you and you can establish the counter pressure pretty easily. Another example of a similarly difficult problem like 808 is this one called Alpine Start where you have to catch kind of like a side pull with your left leg out really left again. Watch how I lean into the direction of pull and it really helps me keep my foot on just because I'm able to really create like a counter pressure by turning my torso to the left. The broad implications of counter pressure is that you do need quite a bit of pulling strength and finger strength to really pull off all the different angles that you need to pull off the wall. So I always tried to train pull-ups once a week, particularly weighted pull-ups, just to hit that ceiling where I'm like at my limit and like break through it and get stronger. And now I'm really progressing to one-arm pull-ups, which has been helping a lot. I also almost always hangboard on climbing days after my climbing sessions, but all of these things are um, more relevant and spelled out in this video. The reason why I talk about this is because pulling strength and finger strength play huge roles in your ability to keep your feet on the wall. For example, being strong on lockoffs increases your ability to be stable while reaching for the next hold. If you're stable, it makes it easy to keep your feet still on footholds that are easy to slip from, seen here for this problem. You can also observe that for this one, halloumi, which took me forever to get without cutting. I had to reserve it early into the session so I had enough strength to make this lock off. Also, I had to really really claw down with my left foot because the foot was not too great and it was pretty slippery. So it brings us back to like why posterior chain warm up is pretty gold. Just having decent pulling strength gives you great stability overall as well. Seen here with this problem called speed. I was a lot weaker with my pulling strength in this clip and this was when I was like mostly climbing only and not cross training with like pull ups and like doing other weighted stuff. And this was when I was training pull ups religiously once a week. And lastly to touch on finger strength, finger strength also plays a huge role because of your ability to like grab onto small holds and be able to pull out of the wall to make that counter pressure. I spent so much time trying to learn how to keep body tension on this one move and it really just came down to raw finger strength on my right hand. I just needed to pull outwards really hard on this tiny yellow crimp just so I can push more with my feet to keep the pressure on this foothold and after strengthening my fingers over the course of like two months, I was finally able to do it. Greater finger strength allowed for more stability of the counter pressure which was key for this crossover move. 
And that's really it for all the things that I learned about body tension within the last six months or so because honestly like training body tension was my new year's resolution. So I hope you enjoyed this video and make sure to get out there, train hard, and have fun. <laughs>